the Posing Gloves here, and today we're going to be checking out Note Matrix. So Note Matrix has been made to streamline working with MIDI controllers inside of Contact. It's often a big pain to remap MIDI controllers. In this case, I've got a machine, and I have it mapped to go to the George Duke Soul Treasures. But this could be hooked up to multiple instances of instruments. It can be hooked up to tonal instruments. It's super easy to set up. I think a demonstration is the best way to go about this. So everything has been reset right at the, the beginning. So I'm not going to cover how to install this thing. The instructions are extremely clear on how to do that. So, okay, let's say you've got your MIDI controller here. It's all set up. But right now, you know, the notes are who knows what. There they are. You may have mapped them to be something specific via a template. You can have all kinds of templates on the machine. And so now you want to hook this up to something. Drums, be it, whatever it may. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing right here. We're just going to hook it up to, uh, to this guy right here. Now, if you're unfamiliar how to load up multi-scripts, you hit this KSP button. And then in one of them, you would come in. Like, here's an empty one. You go to preset. And then they've got some factory ones you could utilize. Or you could go to user. And that's where you would see the ones, uh, zone matrix, and in this case, note matrix. You can have a couple of them loaded up, actually. So, okay, here's note matrix. So all you got to do to do this is first, you need to tell note matrix what notes you're going to be feeding it. So when I push a pad, it admits a note. So you see here, G sharp one with a velocity of something or other. So these are the different uh, outputs. So what I want to do is I want to map these in. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to alt click in. And, and what happens is when I push a note, it'll read it. And then I have 16 pads, so I have 16 instances here. And I could just go through and just, you know, for every single one, give it a give it the note that each pad gives. So now when I hit my pads, they automatically work. So this is really great. If you have one with less, you can just go ahead and push down on the cells. Or, you know, if you need more, you can push up. I believe you can only have up to 16. I've not tried going past that. It appears that's to be to, to be the case. Now you need to tell it what notes. When you hit this pad, it knows that it wants to use this one. And now you need to tell it what note to output. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to alt-click on out. And I do alt-click because it allows me to just go through a bunch of the at one time. And then I'm just going to go ahead and come through here and play each of the sample bits. And you see it moves to the next one. And we'll go ahead and go to the next one, next one, next one. However many I have. Cool. So we're going to stop there. So I'm going to alt click it to tell it that I'm done. And now. And away you go. You're having a good time jamming. I have a drum loop here all set up to go. You know, so on and so forth. You get in a jam, you make something cool. It's really dope. Now you can change channels. So for example, this is outputting over channel one. Let's say that I had a second one loaded up and let's just pull up some other one. And this one's gonna be on channel two. So what's the last? So this is the last meaningful one. So, or the first meaningless one. So on this one, we're going to want it to go to channel two. Uh, there's probably a hotkey to do this, but we're going to send these to channel two, channel two, channel two, channel two, channel two, channel two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the process. We're going to click out. We've already got it mounted to, routed to our... Cool. So that's all the room that I have. And we've got our two instances. We've got the top one that's being controlled by these lower pads. And so if I wanted to, I could go and load up a bunch of them and sort of mishmash them together however I see fit. And then for the second one, you know, away we go. You know, whatever. A away you go. Uh, now, of course, I, th I think I should do one with actual drums because this is kind of, you know, you think of drums when you do this. So we could go ahead, let's hook it up to Drum Lab. Why not? Or drum selection. What the heck? So we'll go with the crime kit. Sure. 
and I'm going to go ahead and hit output. And now it's really actually pretty handy to have a second keyboard that you could just really quick play all the notes on uh, for the output learning. But you just do what I do and use the mouse for this. Now, fair warning, I am not a good finger drummer, just so we're clear. All right, so we've got all our things in there. You know, so on and so forth. You can sequence in your things. I tend to do things one piece at a time. So there's a couple cool controls here in addition to this. So for example, you have a fixed velocity setting. So you can set it to output something fixed. So for example, let's just put it at max. So if I hit it soft, it's always just, you can see your modified velocity. It's always just gonna be maximum. If we have it down at zero, then we look at our second value. This is the shifted value. So it takes what's at whatever's coming in and then it shifts it by some amount. So I could bring it down to shift it by a negative amount, which would make it softer or I could shift it by a positive amount. If I shift it all the way, that's the same thing as having the fixed velocity up there. So you can shift something. Maybe your pads have sensitivity issues. You can address that here. We've already talked about all these things. Now, you may be wondering about this length control. So let's go ahead and let me, let me show you what this thing's all about. So let's say that we have some tonal instrument. All right, so to show off the length knob, I've loaded up a Cine Harps and I'm gonna really quick restart and just reconfigure this from the get-go because it's really fast and easy. And so what we're gonna do is I'm going to click this reset button and it's gonna, you're gonna reset it. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, reset it. And we'll go ahead and really quick, just relearn everything. It's that fast. Then for the note outputs, we can go ahead and we can just play this on a, on actually I don't have my typing keyboard enabled. Let's go ahead and do that. up here we're gonna have a double note because it's been a long time since i've used the typing keyboard because if you had a midi controller it would go really really fast so i can hold these pads and they'll send out like however long i hold them for but some midi controllers don't do this and so there's actually a length knob which will allow things to ring out so if i push it for like a split second it still rings out all the way and we can actually shift things by an octave. So if I shift by an octave, it shifts all the output notes up. So maybe you want to go up two octaves, more of a harp range. You know, whatever it is, you can uh, jive with whatever you'd like to do. We've also got this course out offset tuning, which would allow you to shift by notes. So maybe you've, maybe you've got a scale in here, like maybe you've sequenced a major scale. You could shift it up so that now you're only working with um, you know, you could just shift your major scales up and down like that. You could have a preset that has major scales, minor scales. Maybe there's a certain scale you like to improvise on. All of those sorts of things you could have uh, set apart for yourself. So that is Note Matrix. Extremely easy to connect to any drum controller. Again, does it not have to be a machine. It could be anything. It could be a keyboard. It just looks at input notes and changes the output notes and gives you a couple settings to do so. You can do it with multiple instruments. You can set it up in a split second. And even if your instrument, if your drum controller or whatever does not have, um, you know, the hold features and things, they've even got length features to allow you to do that. This is actually a pretty awesome utility, especially if you heavily rely on performing things in. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. There's a great, great manual for this in the video where the man himself shows how to use this thing. And I highly recommend you go watch it. it is phenomenal. He makes great videos. So I'll put a link to that down in the description. And thanks for watching and have a blessed day.